What's up guys, so today we're gonna to be going through my top five tips for Amazon FBA. Whether you're just starting out or you're already selling, you're gonna to wanna to hear these. These machines are the worst pieces of shit ever. We're headed up to visit family again for Thanksgiving. So just grabbing some food and then getting on our way. Hey, Joe? Hey, how's it going? It's Matt. Doing well? Look how LA this is. Got Bulletproof coffee. Got the most interesting kombucha that I've ever had. And we've got $21 almonds. <laughs> we got a bunch of stuff in them. All right, so let's get into my five tips. And these are geared towards Amazon FBA, but a handful of them will be, I don't like what I said. Let me restart. All right, so here are my five tips for Amazon FBA, and a few of these definitely apply to other businesses as well, so I'm sure no matter who you are, you can get some value out of this. Point number one comes from my recent video where I talked about new and young entrepreneurs and my main piece of advice to them. And that is that you need to just learn, learn, learn up front. That is your biggest advantage. You have the time to immerse yourself in information, read books about business, dig into YouTube videos, podcasts, and Facebook groups around the topic that you're trying to learn. In this case, Amazon FBA. There's so much information out there. So if you think that you can get into this without immersing yourself in that space, I just, I just don't understand. Like I get some questions that are just like, please help, I want to make money online. What do I do? I'm just like, you can't start with that. You need to start with learning and immersing yourself and consuming all the information that is out there at your fingertips. The internet is freaking amazing and you need to take advantage of that because there's so much out there for you. What the fuck? <laughs> do it again? No, because he did the... the... <laughs> And that's what happens when there's traffic in LA. People are bored. They get creative. Okay, point number two. Uh, this is going to be geared for those of you, my subscribers will already know what I'm talking about, for, but for those of you that are just getting into Amazon, don't really know like what model to go with yet, this point is to own your product. And what I mean is I'm talking about private label and building your own brand, your own product, so you own that piece of Amazon real estate, as opposed to wholesale, reselling, uh, maybe a dropship model on Shopify. I'm a big, I'm, and those are fine and those are great, but what I'm talking about here and what I suggest to you guys and what I have implemented to build my business to the seven figure level is private labeling products, creating my own brands of products and owning that Amazon real estate where I am in control and I have the leverage and it grows and is more valuable over time. I have the customer data. I have control over making the photos better, the description better, changing the price, everything, I own it. I'm not competing directly with anybody. I'm competing with other brands, but I'm not competing on the same exact product and you know, working it down on price and just getting into this endless war of all of those problems that come with the other models. So own your own product and that is what you're going to sell. What do you think? Yes. I agree. So point number three is something to avoid. This is one of the biggest mistakes that I see people making. People that are asking me questions and they're coming to me and this is their problem. And it's that when they're looking for a product to own for their private label product, they're just looking at a market that is just dead and there's no potential. And so you, when you're selecting your product, you, the first key thing is existing sales volume. And there are so many ways that you can figure out how well a product is already selling, which is immensely incredible that 
that information is available to you. So you need to get into something that you know there's a market for. So don't go into some product that just simply doesn't sell because then if you just do, even if you're the best in the world, there's nothing there. There's nothing there for you. You need to be competing in a market that people are buying those products and that's very obvious but a lot of people seem to be looking at getting an idea and when you dig into it there's just really not a market there there's just not enough potential you could own hundred percent of that market and sell one of them every like two months or something it's just not interesting maybe if your product is like a hundred thousand dollars or something okay that could be interesting but for what we're talking about here you need to pay attention to the existing sales mar mar the existing sales volume, the existing market size, because that is key. You need to be playing somewhere that money is flowing, figure out a way to be a little bit better, take a piece of an existing pie. You don't wanna be trying to take a piece of a pie when there is no pie. Do you like pie? Gluten-free pie. Yes. Point number four. This is having a willingness and risk tolerance to be able to lose some money up front that will set you up for success later. And what I mean is you can't, this is not a business to get into with zero dollars and requiring a guaranteed income immediately. It just doesn't work that way. The more you are in a position where you could potentially lose money and be okay, I honestly think that's the best place to be to start a business because you're not so desperate and scared and just playing with this like scarcity mindset of like you're afraid to throw 10 bucks at something because you're not, you're really, really worried about that. You need to be able to lose some money up front to profit later or just in general be, be okay with the potential of placing a big risk for a lot of upside that could not go well you have to be you have to come to terms with that risk and this ties in with like just to put it in sort of Amazon terms a lot of people are like really afraid really afraid when playing with PPC uh, pay-per-click that's Amazon sponsored products the uh, you're bidding for paid paid traffic basically the little sponsored products that show up on Amazon and people a lot of people don't want to turn that on from day one because they're like well I have no reviews I think this five dollars that I spend is gonna be wasted uh, but that is completely wrong in my eyes you need to be able to throw some money at that such that it will help you build traction for the future. So you need to be able to go into the red up front so that you can profit later. You need to be able to take that risk. So if you're just starting out, the best place to be is in a position where you have some money to play with because there are no guarantees. You need to be able to experiment, learn, tweak, get better, lose some here that you'll apply to making money there. So yeah, be willing to risk, be able to lose, um, that will just set you up much better, in my opinion. All right, so point number five, and this is a big one, so pay attention. This is that portfolio is better than a single product. Everyone is looking for the single product that will blow up and make them a bunch of money. And while I like the idea of making a bunch of money, and that's great, if you just have a single product, you have a product, not a business. You need to expand and have a portfolio to have a business that is more reliable, cannot just be taken down in a second, and you're not so emotionally attached to a single product because single products go up and down. Having a portfolio is a much safer, long-term approach to this business because then you'll have 10 products and as one goes up another goes down and you're not freaking out because your business died overnight if a single product goes away for whatever reason uh, so trust me from experience you're not gonna feel too good when you have a single product that's doing well even if it's doing really well because you have no stability you have no faith in the fact that it's gonna keep going and all all of your risk is in that single product so that's why I talk so much about wanting to build a product line and evolve that product line into a real brand where you're serving a market more than one product that are related in a cohesive way that is a long-term business that you can grow over years and years and potentially sell um, and you're no longer gonna be so worried about the single product that's making you 10K a month for one month and then it dies. I am much more excited about building out a portfolio. You know, look, look for these products that can make you a grand a month, three grand a month, and do that 
10, 20 times over the next couple of years and then you'll have a really solid portfolio. Some of those products will die and you know what? You won't care when you're making that much money. So don't be so tied to a single product. Build a portfolio. Some will do better than you expect and individual products will take off and that's great and that's awesome. But don't be reliant on a single product. It's just a bad place to be. It's a nerve wracking place to be. It's not safe. Uh, so build a portfolio. Maybe you'll build multiple brands as well, but build out horizontally from those existing products to related products and build out a real portfolio so you'll own a real business that grows over time. Again, a single product, you have a product on a business. What do you think? Product, not a business. All right, so Jessica's gonna give a recap of the five points. Let's see if she's got it. Number one. <laughs> Number three, uh, no dead products. <laughs> Number four, be willing to risk. And lose up front. And lose up front. To profit later. To profit, what? To profit later. Like, to profit later. Yeah. I mean, the whole point is like, be willing to risk because you'll learn from it and you'll never do it again, so it's really good for it to happen. Yeah, you'll learn from that and that you might need to go lose money up front to be able to get traction to profit. Mm -hmm. And number five, um, have a portfolio, not just a single product. Because um, you don't want to just do one product because that's lame. If you do multiple products, then you have a little more to show off to <laughs> anyone. That's the reason. Yes. <laughs> Closing up. Jessica passed the quiz. <laughs> Alright, so that's all I've got for you today. Uh, if you thought this was valuable, please hit the thumbs up. It really does make a big difference. Uh, if you're new to this channel, subscribe. So much more coming. Make sure you check out the, the previous videos. There's a lot of good stuff up already. And yeah, see you in the next one. Put that in the video, Francis. You're fired if you put that in the video. <laughs> I'll hire you back. <laughs> I'll hire you back, just do it. This is not in the video, but I hope you laughed at that, Francis. <laughs> it's in the video. It's not in the video. It it's